Okay, so restorative sequence today will offer a variety of classic poses, but also those of you that have uh, two bolsters, we're going to add a couple um, ideas in with the use of the bolsters. It's, and you may end up wanting to use that second bolster for some of those. You may end up going back to using a blocks or a blanket. You'll see. But it's nice to be familiar with your props so it becomes kind of like, like playful, I think. So let's have our bolster set up on top of a rolled blanket. Um, bolster is tipped up with a, bl a blanket on top of that, set up like so. And then you'll have your seat on the floor in front of the bolster. And position your, your belt so it's around you in a big loop. But first things first is to get your blocks under your legs. So your feet are together in like a, kind of like a foot prayer position. It's kind of what it is, isn't it? And the joining of the feet also has a belt over your waist, around your feet, and connecting the balance of the legs with the balance of the belt to the low, I would say not even back, it's like at the eyebrows of the buttocks. Your belt really scoops around your back. If you like that security, Definition when you lower back, I would keep it so your blocks are you know fairly low-ish. You don't need to have them that high, but generally the second setting is plenty. Um, if that's even too much and you want a little more stretch, just go to the first setting. And then just notice your feet might kind of complete that openness. The belt is probably pushing up towards the, the lower shin space. And you can have your block set however you want. You can fuss around anytime. Fussing is fine because we don't hear you fussing. Okay. So sand is an option as well across the ribs. The whole practice is optional, I guess, at this point. But fulfill that pattern of stimulation for the breathing muscles. So let's say we decide to have the sand so it's quite high on the rib cage, it's not the collarbones, but it's, it's up at the rib intersection. When you exhale the next time or so, you'll let the arms kind of spread open and then feel when the arms are extended out, how the chest musculature starts to, well, it has definition, but it also has an ability to stretch. And so many of us have back, I guess you could say our back can be brick-like, you know, the trapezius, the back area has the brick-like issues when it's touched. So working on opening the front is, is quite helpful for that back area. So if the sand is appropriate for you, use that. If not, just go without. And then encourage as you center yourself onto breathing that the breath is in motion, filling the body. And the exhalation as it leaves, centering into the posture. So what's left is the shape. The breath comes and goes, and the shape may become a little bit more of a definition right in your focus, so feel there's balance in the knees, in the seat, all the areas that there's two of, right? Arms, two sides. And then notice if your breath actually experiences awareness in both lungs. If you fully breathe, and go along the course of the exhalation. Yeah, filter the air inwards. Use the nose as your filter. Exhale out, empty the lungs. Now, as you feel the shoulders centered 
and maybe they are kind of leaning into the bolster. Take a moment where the arms move open off of the ground so they hover and you get to decide if you reach the hands together over the chest area straight up towards the ceiling or if you flow the arms back behind you. Now that's only an option, right? If it feels like it's quality balance in the chest muscles, the sand might create some challenge for you to move your arms because you have this breathing weight on your breathing structure. So you can always slide off of the sand and then explore the variation with the arms without. That feels a little more freeing to me, even though you might prefer to have the sand on. Not necessarily where you get big bonus points, but it might feel like you end up with a more relaxed nervous system eventually, right, from that weight. But I like to have free flow of movement. Okay, now feel if your arms can reach around, if you have sand continuing, slide it off, and reach the arms across the chest as if you're giving yourself a hug. Feel where the shoulders in the back layer kind of lift a little bit to greet the shape. Okay, change the crossing, opposite arm on top, hugging. Now notice if your elbows push down or if you can feel the elbows pointing towards the ceiling. And you're still trying to slide the hands around the back to pick up the blades. And then release, make sure the sand is off, unbuckle, and then let the knees point into each other. So sliding the belt aside, sliding the blocks. You never know if you'll need them for some interesting shape, but I would take the feet apart and then once the feet are separate, they don't have to be mat width. You might decide, well, you start there. And then when the toes pivot in, the knees kind of relax a little bit easier towards each other. I find if my feet are too wide, like the mat width, it, I just can't find ease getting my knees to touch. I, I'm kind of, it's all shaky. So yes, of course, if my feet were a little closer, but if I pull my toes in, that's not always the best move. If you feel it up in your knee, no good. So be careful here when the knees touch in, we're trying to get this, this, the kind of the slant of the quads to gently start to find that concentration and movement. You can always kind of touch into the, the front leg piece towards the knee as far as you can easily reach. You're trying to get that zone on the side to start to stretch. Taking the blocks so they're beside you, they're not in the way. You're going to move your knees so they shift side to side. Windshield wipe of the legs. The feet can separate, meaning they're not turning the toes in as much. But play a bit with these two different patterns of maybe stopping and letting the knees touch. And then go back to that windshield wiper or just keep windshield wiper going. And then feel how the position of the legs shifts, but right? it's not a stop position. It's massaging around the glute area, the buttocks, and the movement of the knees over to the side, if you keep going with them, well, they may get close to touching the ground, but no requirement. That's not my goal. My goal is to feel the nuances of circulation in my hip, in my front leg, and my side of my legs. This one will grow on you, I think, in decades. I think this, this comes back to you to do when you're sitting upright, you're laying on your back. Most of us know this positioning as knees to chest and let the knees rock side to side, but this is helpful for the thigh, the thigh front and side. Okay, now shift back in so the legs are in that proper balance. Scoot the feet in towards the seat. If you have slid down off your bolster, I would kind of use your hands and slide yourself back so that you can feel the bolster base hit up to the, um, the sacrum area. So it kind of broadens the low back. If you think of where the bolster is, 
it sort of gives a reminder to stay um, relaxed in that low frame. So you have to kind of find what works good for you with the touching of the bolster to the base. Lift up the right foot, and then let's take that foot to the right, the left knee, sorry, the right foot to left knee, crossing at just the ankle to the knee. And then sense when you get a ball or sandbag or block or pillow, you could even put a pillow in next to your left uh, leg, I didn't think of that, uh, to work with, well, I just thought of it, <laughs> to work so you have balance next to your upper outer left leg. And then let the legs both tip to the left onto that object and reach for the right knee. So the outside of that left foot is, is sickled, so it kind of rolls to the side of the foot. For me, it's kind of the side of the little toe side of the foot, not all the way on the foot itself. It's just the side rim of the, the bones of the foot, the bottom of my foot. And when you grab the knee, really sense the circulation beginning in the right hip. See if you can stabilize your alignment here so your attention is on that hip. That could mean you use your left hand to kind of pull the knee to the left or towards you. You can go either direction. Relaxing the right elbow down. Even if you like to do more intensity with the arm back behind you, just stay focused on the hip. Yeah, avoid kind of making uh, impulsive motions, uh, like pulling and, and jerking motions. You want to keep it like it's a steady pull to the left side or towards you. Left bicep is toned. Good. So release that grip. Maybe see what it's like without holding the knee. If your leg can actually maintain that crossover towards the left, I can even continue. And now, as the knees go back into center, uncross, right foot down, left foot lifts and crosses to the right knee. And you know, maintain that sacrum support. If it feels like it's not completely connecting to the lower back kind of branch out into the pelvis, that's okay. You probably have a little bit of space there that your hand could fit in. Um, but if it's, it doesn't feel protective for you, then you might need to slide back. That's the only way to do it is you have to slide back. Sliding down won't work. Okay, so ball next to the outer right thigh or pillow. Push that in. And so it's kind of stuck there, right? It supports you so you don't just kind of flop over, okay? We don't want you to do like we do when we do hip crossovers and we let the bottom hip roll all the way to the floor. So this is more of beginning shape that we do in the starting of class, right? So crossover, so my weight of my body is, I'm actually trying to keep learning about this, about how I give in with gravity. So I want my, like my lower abdomen to feel like it's centered towards the ceiling. I'm not twisting. There's no twist in my ribs. There really isn't. No twist. The twist might go from your hip over. So reach for the left knee if you haven't already found that position. And then how far the knee is away from you is fine. So and I can't see everyone's knee, but if you decide you want to tempt yourself to do a little challenge work. You might have that knee feel a little resistant to the hand. And then you're guiding the leg towards the right. You have to kind of see if you guide it towards you or towards the right. I imagine one side, if you were to like really aim a, a, a visual on it, you probably cross over quite a bit different from one side to the other. It may seem like it's still intense, but likely you have some differences. So focus on the similarities. 
balancing your hips. You know how we did windshield wiper a few moments ago. Kind of see how your leg pattern is leaning towards that right side. And the weight goes to the ball or the, the pillow. And you want your body to shift into that. Breathing slow, a few more moments. And now let go of the knee. And then shift your hips back in center, or actually your leg pattern back to center, uncross, and place the ball between the knees. Okay, now if you don't have a ball, I would use a block. Pillow won't work. Um, well, it might work for some idea with it, but you want an object that you're, you have to define um, the legs to move into that doesn't just kind of smash together entirely, right? Or slide down and not be between the knees. So you want to feel that you're squeezing in and let the arms be wherever that you're not feeling like you have to activate your shoulders. So squeeze in. Okay, the hips stay heavy. So emphasize that your heaviness in the hips, okay, and a grippiness in the knees to the item between. And slide the feet, just, you know, kind of curl the toes and move them a little bit downwards. And I'm kind of at my bottoms of the feet still down, of course. What I'm trying to create is this ability that I'll have to lift up, to sit upright, but the farther forward my feet go, right, then I have a, a little more of a platform to sit up towards. Otherwise, if they're really close, I can't quite get my body to have enough base to hold me up. So try this. Let the arms flow straight behind you so you get momentum. Inhale. Exhale. Come up. Let the feet slide out if you need to. Don't worry about sliding your feet out. And then when you move yourself up to sitting, I don't think you have to keep sliding your feet out, but squeeze in, knees go, drawing inwards, and then get a feel for arms forward besides the knees or just a little higher would be fine. And then try, kind of play with that decision. If the arms are lower, the arms are higher, lean back so you feel where that bolster is. Okay, now come back up in center, move the ball or block, and then get a hold of your belt and let's just hook the belt. <laughs> Don't knock your nose with the buckle, but get your belt with your under your feet and then lift up. Now, ultra challenge for muscling your way into something, but feel the compilation of the, the energy of just getting your feet into the belt to get a lift. It's enough already, I find, just to, to manage it, but just doing it is okay, just do it and see how you do. Okay, now my arms are straight, they're reaching, they're not overly reaching to round my back, but kind of get that feel of the lift. Now, as you bend through the knees, so you're more into that right angle here. Try to lift your chest. Now as you lower your feet, try to lower them so the arms go straight down. They're kind of aiming down from your shoulders. Lift the heart, inhale. And exhale with the head, and then you'll take the feet as high up as you can reach them. Okay, now lower down the feet, and then slide the belt away. And this will be kind of interesting. We're going to balance with. I want you to take your bolster flat. So I'll be talking about bolster. Some of us will have... Um, Flat bolster, and so you have a round one as well, or you have two flats. I'm not sure, but this needs to be the flat one. So you're going to take a seat on top. So you're 
kind of midsection is still kind of perked up here. Okay, you got your blankets. Let's see how we should align those. Let's, if you're gonna, be, we don't know if some people use two bolsters or blankets, so let's just stay with this focus. If you have a second bolster, just get it in front of you now. So let that be in front of you. If you got a bunch of blankets, place them behind you. This will be kind of a little free for all, I think. So right leg bend, so you cross that right foot under, so the foot is to the flat bolster. So kind of like a crisscross, okay. This bolster is just in front. You'll, you'll find out if you use it or not. Get your belt and get your sandbag on top of the right thigh, so the bottom leg. Cross the sandbag. You can't say I get my sandbag on my right leg. I'm seated on my flat. And they call it the standards or flats. We'll just call them flats because that differentiates round or flat. It's kind of obvious. So I got my belt under my right, uh, sorry, my left foot. And I want you to lift up that leg like you just had your two legs in front. Maybe you've only got one, bummer, okay? But when that, that levity, that movement of the leg moves, well, it kind of is stiff. It's not really actively bobbing up and down for me. Um, you kind of have some, some work to do here with the back circulation. So lower the foot down. You, you want to have the belt free so it's not buckled around you. Feel where you have it under your foot. Kind of, you know, loofa your foot a little bit here. So get the belt sort of to the ball and then it's going to slide down to the arch. Once your heel is down, see if you can nudge your back muscles a little bit forward so you're sitting as prim and proper as you can. Right, this is called heron pose, the heron. So we have the arms kind of down by the sides. And then the focal point here is that the back side of that left leg, we're trying to get some nice flow through that meridian. So as you pull with your arms, then I want you to try to work with, can you get that leg to lift? Do you have to muscle your arms to do that? So my sense is you do, but you want to try to use your lower abdomen and your leg muscles to get the leg up. So use the proper pull with your hands on your belt, and then just try to kick your foot up. Just see what you do with kicking, right? Kicking. Your arms hold the belt, so you're not going to suddenly fall back, but you're trying to use your lower abdominal muscles and your leg to kick that leg up. I know you use your arms, but... Let's just pretend we used our leg and our core. Maybe we did. Now when you're pulling with that, the arms, right? Feel what you can do if you can loosen up the grip with your hands a little bit. So maybe the leg falls down. Hopefully it doesn't fall off, but falls down into balance. And then just simply bend your left knee, release the belt, and hold the leg and cross it over the right leg. So now you're in this pretzel asana, right? So now your left leg is crossed over the right. If this doesn't work for you at all, you can't make that crisscross today. Then you could put your right leg to straight. It could be lengthened out in front of you. Straight in front, you could go there too, okay? Or if you have your bolster in front of you, I suppose you could put your foot on the bolster, but get it really close to you. Just wanna be careful that this doesn't make you round your back, okay? So hook your right arm to left leg. Let's get into it here. Twist to your left and then flow the mid, the low back muscles are stable and the back ribs rotate. So deep back ribs turn. And you'll feel like your front ribs, your sides do the rotation, but see if you can let those back ribs rotate. And left hand could be on a blanket. You could reach it around your waist. So it's like you want to get a hand onto the sandbag handle. That's nice to do. If you have one with a little handle on it. And then when you rotate to the left, can you tilt a little bit forward without tightening your neck? Use your arms vigorously so there's less pull in the neck muscles. So you have to kind of work with your arms to push. Good. 
Yeah, you can kind of feel how that right arm presses into the left leg. Breathe. Okay, so let's come back forward. And we'll take an option where the sandbag is going to move in a few moments to this left leg. So these are a couple of variations we can we could play with. So if you've got a bolster in front, kind of get it ready to use in a moment here. Situate yourself. So I'll show the version that's kind of no extra props needed here. We just put the sand to the left side and we lean forward with likely the necessity for some blocks, right? You're going to lean forward with your blocks. Okay, you can take them farther front if you want. But since this is in the way, I'd rather show this. You can take your bolster <clears throat> and lean forward as well. This is nice to do. So you have a little more height, a little more lift. Right, another thing you could use is like a stool or a chair seat. That would work well too for that reach. But this way, the back muscles, whether you have the bolster, let's say you don't and you have blocks, they would be farther forward than I showed previously. And you might find you get some more definition if you have some good flexibility because you would lean down more, right? The bolster makes it so you don't have to have as much flexibility to do the shape. So it has it has some some pros and cons, I think, to the bolster. But you're going forward with sand on the left leg. You're in a simple cross-legged position. If you're sliding off your bolster, just push yourself back so you're up as much onto it as you can before you tip. <laughs> and experiencing the back muscles strengthening. Few more moments here, breathing slow, exhaling for four to five counts or farther. Try to extend the length of your exhale. Now, if you've got the bolster, set it back down to the side or way in front of you. And then we'll walk the hands back in and we'll get our belt and slide the right foot out. Bring the left foot closer towards the bolster. Now, I'd be a little careful here on the knee, the left knee. So let's say when you have your sand on your left thigh, your right, so your left leg is bent. If this feels like you, it's an opportunity to use something under it, like a pillow or a squishy ball, probably a little pillow would be better for that one. You just don't want the, the leg to start to feel pressure on the side of the knee, or for some people, it might be inside. And so that means that if this left foot is jammed into the bolster closer, and it, you get out and you feel it tight, the leg hurts, you know, it's a little spastic blood flow, then that's probably too much. So just see if a little bit of help can be manage those issues. And then we get our belt under our right foot and we let that leg lift up. Yeah. If your left leg is not held as, as close in on this side, uh, you might find this lift up with the leg is a little more challenging for your form. Right, your base is, is wider that way. So hold on, and this time I have my arms a little bit too bent up there. So see if you can lengthen, so out of your back, you're reaching, you know, versus kind of hooking the elbows. So try to get those arms to, yes, to be lengthened out, and then flexing that right foot and letting the spine lift up and move a little forwards. Okay, bend the right knee, slide the hands back so your foot can actually lower all the way down, heel down, toes are up, lifted, flex right foot. And then feel that you're somewhere a little bit back off center. So you don't want to be so far forward you're crunching down like this. You want to be up and back and this way you find that you're 
lean back so it's like you do in boat pose, right? You're using that core. So you're moving your upper body back and then lifting that right leg back up again. Yeah, you get to, to customize it for what feels interesting for you. So just to know that this pose today is moving into eventually a twist. So what would be good preparatory kind of inner guide work might be to notice if the right leg is a little lower. Does that kind of key up your, your core muscles? Okay. And then if the leg is higher up, you know, you can decide it's more hamstring work. I think most of us want to seek a little bit of extra core work. So if we can manage some of that. It's easy to get your back of your leg stretched out during the day here and there, but the core is kind of a different, it's a different hustle in there to move things around and to stimulate. <laughs> it's got some organs involved. Okay, bend to the right leg, lower down, feel the foot push forward into the belt though, so there's still engagement out of your low back. It's all connected, huh? And then we'll let go of the belt around the foot, detach. And then if I have something under my left knee, I'll remove it because once the right leg crosses over to the left leg, to the outside of it, although it kind of feels like it's not the outside, it's sort of right beside my knee. You might find that your knee is comfortable with that when your hip is balancing. So the right knee kind of moves over towards the left, right, when you're here. Now, if you like to get that handle on the sandbag, you might just position it now so you can reach for it with your right hand. And then, yeah, there might be some play here with the twist. You might go, oh, I have a pretty good range with turning to the right, but that's it. Then you put your arm to the right leg, the left arm, and feel noticeable resistance. And just level out your focus on kind of living with that resistance. Just it's resisting and you're working on tolerating that challenge. So breathing slow. Feel the ribs move with the breath. Relax the abdomen, right? So the diaphragm can strengthen. So feel as you move your spine to the right, that your belly is relaxed. Yeah, your tummy is, is releasing with the breath. Okay, now I don't know about you, your feeling on this with the leg, but when you are turning right, your right leg might start to feel little, little spaces of pressure. So turn back forward, release the grip on the, on the sandbag if you have it, and then just get a feel when you're sitting upright. Okay, now right foot slides forward in front of the left knee, and then grab the sandbag and put it over on the top of the right thigh. And to see if your hips kind of recalibrate here. So you might do a little bit of kind of side tilting, okay, on the bolster. And then as you're leaning forward, you decide, is it going to be bolster? Well, it depends on if you have one, huh? Bolster or blocks. And if it's blocks, it's a little different of a journey, right? You have to kind of trust you can get to them. So you'll lean forward, pull them in closer. If you're using a bolster, you're going to have that so it's straight in front of you, right forward of your mid midline, and then you lift it up and lean into it. Yeah, so sense where the back muscles arch when you have a bolster, because that will be a little bit more obvious, the lift of the back and the arch through the spine. And you might have a short bolster that you're working with. It might not be this tall, which is fine because you can see that if you use the blocks, it's, it's quite a bit 
lower than the bolster, which could still be more hip stretch actually. So not, not, none of these are better than the other, they're just variety. So as you lean forward, let the back spaces ease up all the way into the low back waist. And if you're farther down on the blocks, you'll notice if you're, you know, this would be as low as the blocks. And I suppose if you had your bolster this low, oh no, it seems like the blocks are okay to have this low, but the bolster's not for some reason in my perspective, but it doesn't make a lot of sense, right? Because the bolster up or the blocks low, two options. So you, you decide. But as you are leaning forward to work into the right hip, which is where we're going to do the side stage next, that's going to be the open side to kind of get that warmed up in there. Okay, so if you're forward leaning with a bolster, I want you to shift that to the side. If the block shift everything out in front of you, off to the side, and then you're going to move the sandbag away. If you're Need it nearby so you'll have easy lift off with it. And then as you unwind through the legs, I would just take the feet into kind of a V stance and just do a little bit of a shake out with the legs, maybe a little support when it's tapping the legs. Make it louder than this. I just don't want it to be too loud into your volume. So tap them out at the top of the thigh and then try to keep it top of the leg, side of the upper leg, of the knees. And then as you move your feet back in, this is when things change up a bit. So you're going to slide down off the flats. Okay. Those of you that have a flat and blankets or pillows are going to stay with the flat like this. And you're going to go into side stage. At this point, you can stack up your blankets. And I would just stack them up in uh, quarter folds. Um, you can wad up a, um, the blanket or add a pillow so that you have this length on the side, right? Your ball could be used. Okay, that's one idea. Now, if you're going to use a bolster set, you'll take the, um, I guess you could sit on one of your blankets, huh? But you'll just push out your bolster flat and then take in your round, or if you have a second flat one, that's fine too. So it's fine, but if you're going to have a round bolster, you use that here because it will lift the ribs. And, Get your sand ready to go, just put it on. The bolster so it's easier to get up there on your body, putting that ball on the inside of the right leg. And then what I like here is the blankets overhead. I kind of like this. You could use a block, you can use blankets. But as you lengthen that side, you kind of explore where the left leg is close to the bolster. To make sure I know what prop I'm against here. And yeah, this is almost not high enough for my hand. So I can, blankets are very versatile, best prop ever. Everyone got blankets. So you know, if it feels extreme in the right side with the sand, it's likely really stretching your underside quite a bit more than you're used to. So take the time, even if you want to go sand free with it. Just get a feel of that length into your side, waist, breathing. Yeah, sand or no sand, you decide. Sometimes it's too much. Felt like it was okay, but lots of grippiness for me on that with the sand. And the bolster, it's, you know, it really defines that mid body. So the rest of the body, even your your neck and your head down to the other bolster feels easeful, but the ribs get a lot of work. Depends on the intensity of your round bolster, doesn't it? Okay, and let the spine, spine has no problem with it, right? It's the rib cage. So breathing in the rib cage. Ribbing, breathing and rib, rib. Okay, take a few moments here. And this could be a two to five minute pose, just knowing that. 
can work on the digestive tract, breathing tract. Okay, before you come out, everyone might just have different props set up. We have different bolsters. You know, maybe you're using multiple blankets or pillows as well. But feel if you can get the weight of your head to surrender into the prop that's under your head. Okay, and some might not like the bolster as much as blankets because they're a little more giving to your ability to let gravity have you. Like with time, your head probably goes down a little bit more. Right with releasing. So if my arm goes overhead and I feel like my neck is pulling, it's probably not the position of my head as much as it's the position of my arm. Because I'm fine without my arm reaching in my neck, but once I reach the arm, it's a little tight. So you can always move your right arm open. Before you come out, I would move the sandbag away. Feel if your right arm can open. Maybe you can roll on the back of your head. Yeah, whether it's on a blanket or bolster. Open the chest. Okay, now we're gonna keep moving the ribs here. So now as you rotate back down to the left, I know some of us have this bolster, some are, well, we all have a bolster right here, don't we? No matter what your choice is, you got at least one bolster here. So turn to your, just roll onto your back. So you've got your bolster underneath your back and we'll take a horizontal chest opener, but when you lower back down onto your blanket or pillow or bolster behind you, yeah, you wanna find that your arms can stretch open. So might take a little fumbling around and you feel like you have true space for your arms to be between the items. So we want, if we have, these props that are kind of bulky-ish. You know, it's a little more giving when you've got a blanket set underneath your head because you can kind of jab the blankets with your arms, then they just give way, but a bolster doesn't. So walk the feet closer in so that you have that convenient arch, right? Your feet can be apart, the toes can turn in a little bit, but work on the spine adaptability, especially how good your lumbars are with this position. Right, they, they serve us well for arching. They're really thick. The thoracics though, right? They have a little different journey here of kind of unwinding and unraveling. And then the head is back. Now, if you want more height under your head, well, you probably have some more blankets. So you could put another blanket underneath your head. That feels good. Now my neck is comfy. My back is a little less pressure opening my ribs. So you decide, but be sure that your neck is not crunching your chin in towards your chest. Let's open here. This might feel a little foreign to you because we spend so much time in the day forward with our head tilting down, but just moving it back could feel just rigid in the side of the neck. So use what you need under your head. Now, if your back is getting compromised here, bring the knees in towards each other. If that still continues to be a problem, then how long you're here, right? You could put a block under your pelvis. Right, that'll take away any suffering in the low back pretty quickly. Lots of props. Okay, a few more breaths. Opening through the chest, sand free. And now, once we start to shift out, just notice where your final decision was on this one. It's okay to make it comfortable, but even if you know that you can go without the block, just to kind of feel the ease in the circulation in the front body, and most essentially my low back is feeling very peaceful. And now, as you begin to roll to the right for the second side stage, the only disruption would be if you happen to have a block under your pelvis, like I do. 
you have to take a moment and slide that away. But otherwise, you can just roll to the right and feel each little layer, not like each rib, but the layers in the rib cage that respond to pressure on them, right? So it's like when you use sand on your ribs, you're putting pressure. So I roll to the right, and I like this height. Now let's say you don't have a round bolster, but you kind of are curious about it. You could put another blanket on top of your flat, and you can make a little bit of a roll with that blanket, right? You could just kind of roll it out. It's, it's fairly intense, right, with that focus. But all you've got to do is, is look at the foundation book of restorative, and it has a pretty high lift for side stage, right? It's sideline relaxation. So we stretch our waist over to the right on the props. We use a sandbag. If it's too much, you can just slide it off. You don't even have to start with the sand, but the right leg tucks up towards the bolster, the flat or the round, and the left arm is reaching. Right, if it reaches and it doesn't feel like it's affecting your neck, you're good. But if you start to notice once your arm goes over, your neck is tightening up. I'm not saying you're going to have that happen, but that might be a cause for make the blanket higher or the block over underneath your hand. You could use blocks. That will probably prevent the neck from straining. Or you can go without this position, right? And let the arm rest anywhere it's comfortable. The other side, it could be moving back a little bit. But the availability of the intake of oxygen be equal with the out breath. So try to focus on a lengthy out breath, but getting rid, right? Getting rid of that buildup inside. The CO2. And just let the weight of your head relax into the, maybe it's a bolster or maybe it's blankets or a pillow. Okay, now feel for a moment when that left arm comes away from overhead, whether it goes out to the side or it relaxes on your side. It could be stretching the chest towards the ceiling so you roll on the back of your head a little bit. That might be a nice option for you. Maybe kind of nodding your head a little side to side. Left chest open. Okay, so now as you shift back in center, we're going to move things up quite a bit into our legs and you know, some basic upright um, poses, right, standing shapes eventually. So feel where the waist turns to the right and guide the left knee to the right, right? However you have it, whether you have a ball or not, left leg to right leg. And then rotate, and when you come around, let's see how we're going to fundamentally do this one. We're going to turn, and then you'll, if you've got a wall space to your left or right or behind you, you're going to find your way with that blanket. One blanket is plenty to that space. So what about all these other things in your way? Well, you're going, to, you're going to use that second bolster at some point again, so just put it off to the side. Your first bolster, the primary bolster, our primary bolsters, they stay nearby for all of us. We might get into them sooner. Um, but let's say you've got, you're going to your wall space. The one thing, actually, we're going to use our belt again. So just keep all, all your goodies nearby. Get the main things out, though, for the, the standing set. Your blocks and your blanket. Okay, so blocks are on the front sides. 
and your blanket. Now, quarter folded or flat, you can do either. We are going to do some upright, so I don't know if you want a whole flat blanket on your mat. You might find it's a little slippery. Or just, it's just may compromise your clothes a bit. So place a blanket under your knees. Okay, even if you're, uh, you're, if you have a carpet and it's pretty cushy where you are and you don't need a blanket, you don't have to have it. It won't, won't be required there. So one option is to have the hands, you know, a, a whole stance forward from underneath your shoulders. So take a reach with your palms, with, widen the hands out a little bit, and then tip your body weight back so that your feet are at the wall. The balls of the feet feel a little bit of stretch at the bottom of your foot. The toes are on the ground though, so they're not walking up the wall yet. And then as you shift your weight forward, hands are wide on the mat. So have them wider than shoulder width. And then lean forward and keep the feet pushing into the wall as you center the hip flexors and move into up dog. Okay, feel where your feet push, feel where your head lifts up so there's a nice arch to the spine. Good, so feeling, hold the whole back awake and then slide back into that first shape where we push the floor away and we feel that reach back into the hips. Head lowers down, touch the floor with your head. You know, round your back to cat and then lean forward to up dog. Lift up your head, arch to the spine. Exhale back, head tilts down, fingers spread out. Push the floor away and stretch out your back. Okay, now get into this rhythm. So the, the next part of our sequence is going to be rhythmic motion right through the legs. With this is our kind of platform, this movement forward and back. So next time you shift back, yeah, come back up to table. I mean, we should probably try it off pose. So those of you that are up for it, toes under, lift up the knees, but walk the heels down towards the base of the wall so that you can entertain the sensation of muscles and calves okay so feel where the heels maybe are a little bit up at the wall and for some of us the heels will be down on the ground that might seem like a real far stretch for you though so that's why it's nice to have a wall to let your heels lift up on and push the floor away okay all right now feel how you could use this momentum of your hips already lifting your hips are already moving back and so i want you to step your right foot forward and get your blocks so they're at minimum you know, even if you're pretty tall have them at the second setting maybe that would be helpful for our approach here so when you bend through that right knee just feel that it, it's kind of, it's sort of on a full deep lunge, but you're, you're just being cautious of the knee joint. So my back heel for me is up at the wall, right? The heel is tilted up at the base of my, of my wall. So my heel is not on the ground. And I don't want it to even try to get to the ground. The wall is really great for lunges, right? So my right foot, toes facing forward, unless I get turned around. And then taking your hands now so that you're going to get a little bit higher up with your head, chest forward. Okay, and exhale back, toes up on right foot. Same motion we did when we were on hands and knees. Inhale forward. Try to keep your heel back at the wall. Exhale, lean. And the heel kind of tries to move with you when you go forward. It tries to kind of go with you, the back heel. So your work is on stretching that calf back. You'll find out why. We'll get to that calf. Okay, now if you don't see that, the right foot, the toes lift up when I move back. And then as I lean forward, it's pretty simple. Okay, but now see if you can scoot your left foot a little away from the wall, you know, forward. So your heel might be able to go down and scoot your hands back on those blocks. Try to keep your right foot, front of the foot down and go forward. So you're reaching through the waist. You're trying to get your trunk to stretch 
this whole side, Parsvo Tanasana, so extended trunk. Okay. Let's say your heel is nowhere near the ground. It's like, it's just up. It's at the wall then, right? It's a little bit up at the wall. Use the wall. You can take your blocks up higher and farther forward. And we used to do this one with a chair a lot, right? Because it's good with the chair. That's why the blocks need to go up. Unless you want to use your chair. And then see if you can levelize your hips. So the right hip is not pulled forward. It's not continuing to go forward. You level the hips. Your back calf is probably screaming on this one. It's a little bit intense. Yeah, so if you're tilting and you're not sure about that with your circulation, use your block heights. You're a little more forward, you're more calf balanced. Okay, now carefully bend through that right knee. See how far you can extend using that back heel reaching down. You'll see the more you bend through the right knee now, it's going to be felt by your back calf. Okay, now to lift up the back heel. Step it besides the right foot. Take a wide stance with your feet so they're a little wider than hips distance apart. Okay, and then let the balance come into your feet, especially to the roots of the toes. So you're not pushing at your heels. And then you're lowering down. And you might reach around to your elbows to a forward bend. You might decide to have your hands continue on the blocks, be here. Be with your hands on your elbows and then let your head lower down. You let the back circulation expand from your feet up to your seat and then even more so in your seat to your brain. That blood flow to the head. Great. So let the spine center over the back of the pelvis, just to improve that blood flow to the face. Okay, now if you're not in that forward bend as much, you're probably halfway, you might be even here if you don't want to go with that, okay? So now let's switch it up. So if we have our feet apart, we'll step them back in together. Step the right foot back, reach the heel towards the wall, use your blocks to help you get back there. So you can find the wall and the heels a little bit up. Okay, left knee forward, inhale and exhale back, toes up. Okay, so this is the same as last side. So I alternate bending, using my block height and leaning back. I think last time we had a block a little lower, didn't we, on this one? So the challenge for you might be, just so you can have a, a vision of it, is when you tilt back, you want to try to keep the ribs lengthening. So let's say you could go down on the floor with your hands or your blocks could be lower. You're, you're still going to be rounding your back probably somehow. So I would just use your blocks um, so that you can keep that upper back musculature really steady and kind of full of circulation, not dropping. Take a couple more of these sweeps, so that we're alternating bending and lunging. Back heel is up at the wall, and then we tilt back and toes move up on the left foot. Okay, now scoot the right heel down, so the foot is, the heel is as close to the ground as it can go. Lower the left foot down, the top of the foot, center, so you're completely down on the bottom of your left foot and you're trying to straighten both legs. Both are straightening out. You're lengthening through the torso. A little bit of effort here I know to work and press through, but lengthen it out. You remember, it will, you'll avoid the inversion aspect if you keep your head up, right? You're not dropping it down. But if you want to, you can bring your head farther down. And use those blocks, and if you find the blocks are too low for you, you can use a chair under your hands. Okay, now as you lengthen through that left leg, ah, bend the knee, left knee, feel that back heel, maybe it's already up at the wall, because it just has to. 
Good. And then lower down to the lunge. So actually, I need my blocks on. So lift, let the back heel sl slide up to the wall. The balls of the, the foot is down. Lower the right knee and steady your lunge. I'm a real fan of these low lunges, but um, some of you might not be because of the pressure on the knee. So you choose. If you find too much knee pressure, maybe your knee is up. Let's take one on each side. So lunge to that left side here. Take the left knee back on the blanket and then right foot forward, feel that lunge through the left front thigh. Well, both legs feel it, but front of the left thigh feels that sensation, low lunge. Okay, let the right foot slide back now. What we'll do is we'll put the blocks just a little bit off to the side and we'll turn. You'll slide your blanket towards your where your hands were there and that will be under your head. And you'll take your seat so you're next right, facing towards the wall. Take a, a, a bolster right next to the wall. And is it too dark in this for you to see? Are you okay? You still see me okay? All right. All right, the sun is out, it's not coming out now. <laughs> Yet another day. <laughs> okay, maybe Eric will come back here if he knows it's it's getting lots of rain here. <laughs> he probably would. Okay, so once you're on your back, you have different, this is different than we've done before. We have a bolster at the base. I mean, I know we've done that with legs up, but for bridge pose, we're going to use the bolster. I don't know why we haven't done the bolster at the wall for this one. I have no clue why we are. Okay, I hope that's not in the way. All right, so what we'll do is we'll scoot our seat towards the bolster and we'll bring our feet up at the wall. So now my rear is not touching my bolster at all. It's pretty far away. But what's important here is that I have my blanket under my head because I prefer that. If you don't want a blanket under your head and you have carpet, that's fine. But when you put your feet up at the wall, it's a right angle. So let's say my feet, I'm not close enough. So if I feel my leg, my knees up towards my knee and slide my hands down, it's kind of a, a slant. It's not straight up and down. At least it doesn't feel like it. So I'm gonna scoot just a little bit closer to the wall. So then my tailbone, the low back area, feels like it's got a little more pressure. Just a little bit, it doesn't hurt. Get a ball or a block, either is fine, between the knees, can be either, one or the other, get one. And as you have the feet apart, toes are, well, of course they go up the wall. But as your hands are maybe onto the floor besides your hips, get a feel of your elbows kind of sliding out and just relax. So it's, it's kind of a like puppet feeling, the arms are. Like the start of a puppet, you know, your arms are down by the side. Okay, so you push into your into your feet, and then once you start to lift your hips up, right? You want to keep that circulation moving through the spine. So I want you to keep that lift and lower pattern. Just continue lifting, and then now going back down and spend very little energy on stopping. So I'm sure you have to stop when you get to the peak and then you stop when you get to the descent, but try to find a ritual of focus, breathing, inhaling, lifting. That's usually the energy part where you have to push an effort. And then as you release the effort, you just still keep some effort right, to lower down the steadiness. So this is so good for us. So when we lift up, we're working on the concentration in the pelvic floor, the bladder, pelvis, stimulating the strength into the bones. So if that resistance is getting kind of edgy for you, you're getting tired of it, well, take a break, that's fine. But, but as you lift up the last time here, I want you to notice when you have something between the knees, if you have a tendency to squeeze into it, or if you can just let it be a spacer. I prefer you just let it, let it be there, don't push into it, so you're not jamming your back up. 
Inhale, lower through the spine. Okay, now once your spine is centered down, you're going to bring the knees to your chest and remove the ball. And now we're going to be putting the feet onto the bolster. And just take a moment, windshield wipe your knees side to side. So my arms can spread out. Oops. Knees go side to side. And work on the weight into the hip. Right, so as the windshield wiper, each side your knees go, you're putting a little bit of energy into that hip. A little bit of sway. Okay, back to center. Get a block. Okay, and then when you push down to your feet, okay, this, this, this is why I, I really enjoyed learning this and taking classes where I do this, but I find this to be something I really haven't spent much energy on with this group. And now it's kind of time to do that. So I scoot back a little bit from the wall. What I eventually want is my feet will be at the wall, my legs will be lengthening, I'll have a bridge pose set up. So if you have a bolster, which our legs will be on eventually, okay? So you have to kind of gauge this one. So I would scoot back so that your knees are still tilted up. And then you'll push down into your feet on the bolster, lift your hips up, slide the block, second height if possible. If you can go to the second tier, I would try that one. So this is where you have to gauge this. You're gonna push your feet into the wall. So if you're tall, you gotta go farther back, right? Your blanket is an option. This is usually taught with a blanket for this version of Setu Banda. Banda. But when I'm here, I have my feet a little bit pivoting in, although I imagine if I was able to look at them, they're, they're not turning in, they're just straight up. So make sure your feet push into the wall. This is really important here, your feet push into the wall. So you have this whole leg muscular band of lengthening. We did something like this on Tuesday, I'm clear we did. We used a belt to hug the leg muscles in so all of your upper thigh, um, you know, circulation, your connective tissue here was bundled in together. It was tightened in. So if you want to make this a real good pose, you would add a belt around here and you keep everything contained inwards. But it's nice to vary it up, I think, in general. So sand can be part of it, right? If I have no belt, then I'm probably going to do something. So if I put my sand across the front of the hips, I don't think anybody's hips cannot tolerate the weight, but it's weight, you know, it's, it's definitely an osteo strong move here when you add these pieces. So you've got that push of the feet, you've got the weight. If you lose the push into the wall because you add your weight, then what you're working with now is to move your shoulders down and open through the chest. See if you can push. But really find a nice balance for you with that action of moving into the wall. Don't overdo it. And recognize that most of the practice is kind of finding, yeah, these look great. Yeah, finding the, the pathway in the front spaces, right? We're trying to open up and then relaxing your chin to stimulate the circulation into the throat, the thyroid, the endocrine glands there. You know, feel the pressure that's obviously with your feet. And then slide the sand away. We'll be back in a second. Okay, walk the feet up on the bolster, right? So that just makes it 100% easier not to be pushing a wall on this one. You have the bolster and then you're trying to get the buttock muscles to engage here, the glutes. That's key. So when I push down to my feet, I want to feel that awareness moving up the back of my legs to my hamstrings into my glutes. 
and then push up just a little bit up from the block and slide the block out and just put it anywhere and lower the spine and try to go slower than you ever thought you could so that the spine eases down on the whole lower back rib space centered. Okay, we're centered. All right, so taking the foot, the feet to the bolster, push the bolster to the right side, use your feet. So you're able to use the feet to move things around. And then once you tug on the bolster with your hand over to the right, you've got your flat bolster, right? That's what you're gonna focus on. Now, when the right leg stretches down, you might be right against the wall. You might have to scoot back a tad, but as the left leg crosses over, Let's say you feel when the left leg goes over that you want more height. Well, you could use your round bolster if you have it nearby. You can add a blanket on top if that's better. You could add a sandbag to the outer left leg. And even better, if you have a ball somewhere. This is a home practice, isn't it? You need all these items. You might as well do this from home. <laughs> okay. So I have the sand on the outer left leg and then the ball attaching to the sacrum area. Left arm is open. Now head can go left, but some people really like the head to go towards the right on this one too. It's all about the neck stretch on that. So what feels better on your neck? Again, we don't need to overstretch our necks, but working in this direction is not the daily habit. So that go inside to side versus tipping down. So you be to the decider on the neck direction and then feel if you can let the weight on that left leg or the left arm, whichever feels more important to you right now, open out both and feel the abdomen move with the breath. Yeah, stay connected with the inhale and then through the end of the exhale. You now shift your head back into center. And the key might be to let the weight of your leg, the left leg, feel like it crosses to the right and then it's relaxing. I know that might not feel like it's relaxing, but your emphasis is on letting gravity stretch that left hip. That's why the sand is useful. You know, when we shift sides, I want you to work on back to that windshield wiper. So ball goes away for a moment or you can keep a hold of it if you don't want to lose it. But feel the knees go side to side. We've done this version of the knees three different ways now. We have it when we were both back was lifted, tilted, then with our feet on the bolster, and now no bolster under. So you might be persuading your waist to stretch a little bit more here, right? Then get the bolster with your hands over to the left side of your mat. You're flat or maybe you're round, you, you can choose. And then with your left leg stretching straight down and it bends a little bit, you curve your right leg over to the bolster on the left. And then if you can get the shoulders back and the chest open, that would be a helpful base in this final spinal that you feel. Even though it's tempting for some of us to roll to the left with our right shoulder, it's really important if you can prevent that so that your chest circulation and your heart and your lung circulation is a little bit stimulated here, right? With your right arm open and down. Well, I can really hear it raining right now. Oh, Susan, we need to send that rain to you, huh? 
maybe this time of writing, just a just the flow of it. Okay, so feel where the sand might be supporting you. If it's not on your leg, if it's closer to your knee, closer to your hip is easier on your knee joint, right? Knowing that if it's too much on your knee, you can always put your sand just on your hip. It's pretty much like it's gonna be a non-issue here with your knee if it's higher up. Unless it feels good to have it close to the knee, stretch out your whole leg. Okay, head turns either right or left, either direction. It really does seem like the responsible way is to go right, though, as far as science with this, though. But you want to try to keep this upper back area stretching, lengthening, without tightening up. Okay, now give a few more moments. Settle the movement of the breath. Four count in and five count out. And now when you come back to center with your head, if it's tilted to the right. And we're going to prepare here to get a lift of the legs. This doesn't mean it's going to be a full inversion, it's a very mild inversion. So you can have your stack up as high as you want to go, depending on what you feel um, comfortable with, with the draining of the legs. So I'm going to give two options now. Slide your sand in your, your you might keep your sand bed in your thigh if it's last pose. Okay, now the options will be bring, bring the right knee in and windshield wiper. I don't want us to squeeze the knees in. It, it shocks the sacrum a little bit from where we're going at the last pose. So that will be the last thing you probably end up doing. So you'll roll to the side and you're going to need all your goodies here. So let's say you want to do legs up the wall today. You just really feel like that's your pose and go for it. You can bring your bolster to the base of the wall and then stack up your, um, your body onto the bolster, swing your legs up. This is just a little different. So we're gonna have our two blocks flat at the base. And then if you have a pillow bolsters, you're gonna start putting them all together. So you'll have your flat at the bottom. Crucial, it's a flat one. It still means you might roll off, but you know, it, we'll see. Um, having the feet touch the wall is kind of a, a tactic some people use for calming the nervous system. So if you want to get everything close to the wall, you could try it. I can't seem to get the measurement perfect each time, so I'm kind of floundering. But you could work on the science of it if you want to get there, you could. So you can have your bolster and props close to the wall. But this is what you're doing. If you got an extra pillow instead of an extra bolster, or you got a bunch of blankets, stack it up so you're, you're high up with your props. Like if you were sitting in front of them, they're going to be probably as high as your, almost as high as your shoulders. That's the key, height. I think as high as your head won't work at all for this, it'll fall over. It'll just go. So I think it's got to be, a, this is the height you can maximize. Okay. Then you get close. You got your belt. Okay. You're going to get your legs up onto that height and your lower back down. <laughs> Yeah, your bolster might kind of stay on there. Yeah, I can't quite really get my feet. I know I could work more on that and get that perfect. But the idea is that you have something that you touch and then that neutralizes, soothes the nervous system, the whole touch idea. Just your feet touching something is, is soothing, um, having the touch. But if you don't find the wall, you don't find the wall. I want you to use your belt if you're okay with it. You're going to... <laughs> Hopefully your bolster won't fall off. Okay, you're going to get your belt around the legs. Got it. Got my bolster again. And you'll buckle up. Um, and you're going to tighten that belt down so that it holds the legs. And see so you have that again, that idea of touch, of 
forward things, pushing, soothing the nervous system. So it gets you the swaddle effect. Right? You're not, you're not getting swaddled. Okay, belt around the legs. My belt is high up. It's not all the way up to my hips, but it's it's higher on the leg versus the knees. If your knees keep flopping out, I don't think you should worry about it on this one. I want you to be able to be casual. Let your feet float and you can add sand to your rib cage from the heart down to the belly or across the ribs or no sand at all. Okay, you choose. Yeah, if you're a little cool, you can toss your blanket over your feet or on your core. What did I do, do, do with this one? What did I did? <laughs> I had my blanket like this, so it's very cozy. So if you don't want to use sand, but you want to use a blanket on your core, that would be relative to something on you. Yeah. So finding that support. Okay, arms out, close eyes, eye pillow on if you have that. And center again, so the shoulders are back and the chest is really realistically relaxed. It's not pushing out. The key is that draining of the legs and it's a pretty moderate balance for the nervous system. Okay, now try to push with your breathing cycle into the belly so the belly body feels like it's actually moving. Even if you have that resistance on it, oops, the blanket might feel resistance. Try to push into that area and let the abdomen gently expand and then relax back towards the spine. Swallowing to clear the throat. And let your head, if you don't have an eye pillow on, you can do this, let your head roll from side to side. Windshield wiper brain, right? Windshield wipers on the brain. It sounds like a poem. Now balancing the head back and center. If you have any sand on your ribs, start to move that aside, but let your concentration go where it's Real important here is on your feet. So the feet are float, they're kind of in a float position and they make it real cool in this position because the blood is moving to the, the vital organs. It moves out of the extremities, that's what inversions do, even mild ones, and moves all that content into the vital organs. They just stimulate the immune system. So here's the deal, right? That's the key with even mild inversions. Okay, so let the weight sink into the back of the pelvis. If you got a blanket on, you can keep that on when you bring your knees into your chest. It's not a big deal. But you gotta unbuckle the, the belt. Okay, so unbuckle. And then guide your legs in towards your chest. <laughs> As your bolster goes with you. Okay, knees in towards the chest. It's nice to have that blanket because it gives a little bit of deep massage into the abdomen, that pressure point. Okay, be sure you roll to the side before you come up. Go to the side before you pop up to sitting. And then take a seat on a blanket stack. Just get a bunch of them up together behind you and sit onto the two blankets or three or four and let the spine find where it's centered now from reclining, right? So it's had its positioning of balance now in the spine, 
lifts up out of its lane. Feel if you can move down into your sitting bones and lengthen into the low back. Lift up the heart and slide your hands in front of the knees together, pressing the palms and letting the mind bow into the heart center. Surrender here and receiving wellness from practice. Exhale, bowing into your heart. Namaste. Okay. Well, that was a lengthy time, huh? All right.